that's off the mark, but Francis the rebound. And a kick out. Shed pull up from the elbow, and it'll go. Jamal Shed, player of the year in the Big 12. We have two of the best guards in the country scoring off in Lipsy and Shed in this one. Keep in mind, this guy dropped 28 in that win over Iowa State. He can score. Team in Lipsy, the kid from Ames. As Momchilovic finds Jones, had it knocked away. Sharp stole it from him. And I think Momchilovic has to shoot the open three. Shed with Lipsy on him. Two great defenders. Feed inside. And there is Roberts. Suffered that shin contusion in the semifinals against Baylor. And really didn't get a chance to play very much. Only seven minutes. But he's good to go here in this one. One of their leaders and an excellent rebounder. And already, John, Shed is uh, putting his imprint on this game. Four points and an assist. King, step back. And that wouldn't go. Francis pulls down the rebound. Well, Jake Cryer, the Baylor transfer. One of their top shooters. This is a very good side-to-side -side offense. Roberts has it taken away by Lipsy. Two on one. Gilbert at the basket. Steps through and lays it in. Well, we talk about Shed, but remember, Lipsy probably is equal defensively. Excellent on ball defender. Cyclone fans making some noise. Cryer off the glass. Wouldn't fall. Roberts almost stole it. Now Gilbert flips it up. And out of bounds, and it'll be Houston basketball when we come back. 15.46 to go, just getting started. Number one and number two for the Big 12 title. And here we are, and you're talking about a great guard matchup, great defense, but Lipsy and Shed, wow. Oh, yeah, two of the great leaders in college basketball. Both do it all for their teams. Lipsy grew up idolizing guys like Monte Morris and Ty Halberton. And, and this guy, four wins away from being the winniest Cougar of all time. Coach on the floor, that's probably an understatement. This kid is special. And on the season, here's how they compare. Not huge scores, but can be if they need to be. Shed a bit of an advantage in the assist column. Lipsy, every bit the defender. I mean, they are top 15, top 10 type defenders in the country. There's no question about it. All uh, Big 12 performers, and of course, Jamal Shed, the player of the year in this conference. Hassan Ward has checked in for Iowa State. He gave him good minutes, 21 with 10 points against Baylor in the semifinals. Roberts kicks over to Cryer. L.J. Cryer, one of those guys that can get his own shot off the move. And that one rattles out. Fight for the loose ball, out of bounds, and it'll be Iowa State basketball. And Kelvin Sampson, Three straight years with 30 wins, his 10th season. And you talk about resurrecting a program, he has turned them back into a power. Yep, no question about it. Probably heading to the Hall of Fame at this pace. By the way, into the game for Iowa State. Damarian Watson, who had been in concussion protocol, this is his first game of the tournament. That one, a loose ball. There's Hassan Ward with the deuce. Well, what I love about that play is they ripped the ball out of Kilbert's hands, but you have to be physical inside on offense, and that's exactly what Hassan Ward just did right there. Tied at six. Pryor with Jones on him. Jamal Shedd directing traffic. Roberts setting the screen, and now Shed with Gilbert on him. Shed, pull up. That missed everything. Loose ball looked to be off of Momchilovic, and it was. It'll be Houston basketball. And keep your eye on this, John. Watch Keyshawn Gilbert. You go into this traffic, you better be strong. Ball comes out of his hands, and Ward right there. Strong finish at the rim. 
T.J. Otzelberger talks about cutting hard, screening hard, and going to the basket hard against this team. Just under five seconds on the shot clock. Houston to inbound. Shed gets it to Roberts. Got to get something up. Roberts at the basket. Offensive foul. First in the game on Big Jawan Roberts. A well, good job by Trey King. The clock's running down. So King is there. He's planted and a good job. For more on Jawan Roberts, let's check in with Chris Budd. Yeah, he's playing in this game despite suffering a shin contusion in yesterday's game. He went to Kelvin Sampson this morning and said, I want to play, coach. He told him, go through pregame warm-ups, see how you feel. What a tough kid, though. Two weeks ago at halftime, got eight stitches in his right hand. Yeah, you see that hand is taped up. And there's Ward cutting. And the stuff gives Iowa State the lead. Sharp gets the handoff, step back jumper. And it's deflected eventually. King gets it off to Lipsy. Cyclones with the lead. And Taman Lipsy here, the kid from Ames, Iowa. And Freddie Hoiberg before him. Some of the really good players from Ames. Harrison Barnes, Doug McDermott. He's got a chance to blossom into a star. Shot clock winding down. King feed oh, inside. Nice pass. And Ward gets fouled, and he will shoot two. Good ball movement by Iowa State. Yeah, and I love the big to big passing. You have to do that against this team because Houston's bigs are active in help. Watch that pass right here. Play before. And they came right back with it again. That's what I'm talking about. Strong physical play inside. Kelvin Sampson told his team this morning that Trey King plays his best basketball against us. He's averaged 11 over two games. Assad Ward, the 6'9 senior, the VCU transfer. He averages 16 minutes a game, but played 21 against Baylor and had 10 points and six rebounds. And rattles out 9 6 here in the early going. John Chomby, Grant Priscilla, Chris Budden, the Big 12 championship. A heavyweight matchup between the top two teams in the conference. Double team comes, Cryer swings. Damian Dunn. And a loose ball. Roberts tips it out. Well done. Shed to Cryer. Got it. Roommate to roommate. And that's important for LJ's confidence. He was four for 18 until he made that shot against this Cyclone defense. Two kids that have known each other since they were in the third grade. LJ Cryer and Jamal Shedd. Momchilovic step back. And Roberts pulls down the rebound. That's a shot he can hit. He can. He's, up. He's got that fadeaway down. Keep in mind, John, every missed shot on both backboards tonight will be heavily contested. There's one area that T.J. Otzelberger emphasizes with his team. Got a rebound defensively. There's Cryer getting bumped with a floater on the baseline is good. L.J. Cryer with two more. He's got five. Well, that's how you score 33,000-plus points in high school. He was a tremendous high school player in Houston. Chilovich looking for some help. Gets it to Jones who fires. Got it! Curtis Jones buries a three. Pryor into the paint. Kick out. Shed. Had it blocked by Lipsy. Shed gets it back. And now Dunn. Dunn into the paint. Couple of ball fakes. Kicks it out. Shot clock's winding down. Shed. And Lipsy collects it. Good defensive possession 
from the Cyclones. Yeah, and again, everybody's crashing the glass. That's from way downtown. Jones couldn't hit. And a foul will be on Iowa State. 10.53 to go here in this one. T.J. Otzelberger's team with a one-point advantage. Two brilliant defensive teams. The third matchup of the year. Games. For people that's never been to this tournament, they'll be shocked by that. Cyclones fans making some noise. Hilton South in full effect. Iowa State's fans are unbelievable in this tournament. They support them. There are not enough seats in T-Mobile Arena to fit in everyone that came down from Ames. 220 miles, they all came down. This is right outside where we are in the Power and Light District in KC Live. That one night that Kelvin was talking about was in 2000 in the championship game. They played Iowa State when he was the head coach at Oklahoma. He lost that game. He did go on, though, to win three straight Big 12 tournament championships after that. 18,500 and some change inside T-Mobile Center and then whatever they got happening over there at Kansas City Live. And that KC Live is an indication of why this tournament will be back here until 2031. This is a incredible environment for college basketball. Yeah, I agree. The whole downtown area, they do a magnificent job with it. Iowa State with the lead by a point. Jed hesitates, flips it up, wouldn't fall, rebound for Trey King. These teams met twice during the regular year. Houston lost for the first time the entire season. They were 14-0. They lost in Ames, a game Iowa State jumped out to a 17-4 lead. There's Jones. Good cut, good pass. Well, you've heard me say it, John. When you play the bully on the block, you must punch him first in Ames. 17-point lead, they got up 14-0. Kelvin told us our guys were shocked for the first time this season. Yeah, it was 14-0 in Ames. In Houston, I should say, the Cougars got up 17-4. Yeah, they punched back. But 80 minutes, four points separate these two teams. Dunn hangs, couldn't hit. And Jones pulls down the rebound. Cyclones by three. Keyshawn Gilbert handling. Iowa State off to a good start. Six for 11 from the floor. Lipsy. And Momchilovic with the rebound. Back to Momchilovic. Three. Got it! Too clean a look right there. It's 17-11. Timeout, Houston, back in 30 to Kansas City. What a scene across the way at Kansas City Live and Cyclone fans. Yeah, they enjoyed that last three by Momchilovic. Yeah, but it came off an offensive rebound. Take a look now. Watch the ball movement. Rebound, kick out, dagger three. Great extra pass by Lipsy and John. At the press conference last night, after he made two of three threes, his teammate said, we knew he was in a slump, but we told him, you've got to shoot it when you're open, and you can see the confidence growing over two days. Just a freshman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Milan Momchilovic, an 8-0 Iowa State run. Jamal Shedd and company into the front court. Emmanuel Sharp. Coming off a 17-point performance in the semifinals against Tech. Javier Francis with the offensive rebound and put back. And I was just thinking, they're not going to the offensive glass like they normally do. Keep in mind, no Joe Tugler, the freshman, broke his foot. And Kelvin said, we're giving up a little bit of offensive rebounding because of the, the absence of Joe. Well, Chilinich not able to hit. Lipsy! Offensive rebound, one of the smallest guys on the court. Grabs the rebound and puts it in. He's the third leading rebounder, John, and he is six feet one. That's how you get a triple double, which he has one of this year. Roberts, double team comes. Sharp moves it. Iowa State's defense has been sensational so far. Houston shooting 26%. Malik Wilson. Gilbert's all over him. Shot clock winding down. Shed got to fire it up. 
And that missed everything. It's a shot clock violation. Melvin Sampson kind of feeling what it's like to play the Cougars right now. 19-13, 7.52 to go, first half. The women's field of 68, followed by Bracketology at 9. So it's all coming at you tomorrow. Houston, if the Cougars win this game, they will likely be the one overall seed in this tournament. Yep, uh, Dan Gavitt said earlier today that Houston is one of three teams locked into one seeds. Iowa State, John, they have to be a two seed getting to the final of this tournament. They'll be going to Omaha, which is a great uh, advantage with this crazy fan base. Foul the floor, that foul on Houston, and it'll be on Emmanuel Sharp. Personal foul number two. Let's send it over to Chris Budden. Kelvin Sampson during that last time out, challenging his team to be more physical. I need more blocking out. I need more rebounding. This has been a theme over the last couple of days. He was upset with it after the quarterfinal matchup. He said also, got to be faster in transition. Get to the other end. We're leaving people way too wide open on outside. Inside, Jones not able to hit. Cryer pulls it down. And that physicality, John, one of the reasons it's not as, as pronounced as it was a month ago, was the loss of Joe Tugger, the brilliant freshman. They're just not as deep inside. Fire kicks Malik Wilson. Wilson steps back, fires it up, and knocks it down. Because of that injury, guys like Wilson have really had to step up. He and Damian Dunn are now the sixth and seventh men. He's athletic enough to rebound. But he's not the size of Tugler. Yeah, even at their best, this is a Houston team that is undersized. Their bigs have long wingspans, but they don't have a ton of height on this team. That's right. Gilbert, shot clock winding down. Gilbert will fire a three. Got it! Wow. We are watching him absolutely blossom. 20 points against Baylor, seven rebounds. And seven assists in 35 minutes, and Gilbert already with seven here in this one. Biggest lead of the game for the Clones. Beat inside, Roberts. Straight on three, Cryer. But he's not able to answer. Well, that's a shot he normally makes. You hold your breath if you're T.J. Otzelberger when he's that open. Gilbert and Johnson and Jones have really come on. Wilson rebounds the King miss. Houston into the front court. Cougars haven't lost since February 3rd at Kansas. They've won 11 in a row. Offensive rebound, Roberts, wide open Shed, and he makes the pay. I have a feeling, John, we're going to see Jamal Shed score more tonight. You could just tell the offense is not in sync. And he's the guy that when he knows what his team needs, he will do that. Yeah, we've seen Shed with some scoring outbursts for sure. Shot clock under 10. They swing it to Gilbert who picks at the clock. Gilbert looking for some space. Got to do something as they fire it up. Curtis Jones off the glass. Shot clock violation. A reminder, Champ Week rolls on next here on ESPN. It's the ACC Tournament Championship. NC State and North Carolina. How about that? The one seed and the 10 seed squaring off. How about the fact, John, that 18 one seeds during Championship Week have already been eliminated. They did not get to the finals. Were there any, was there a one specifically that surprised you? No, no, because when you get to March, and I, I live the, through this, you know, you could say Purdue today, Wisconsin, yeah. but no, not really. But this is a whole different animal four or five days in March than what you do for nine weeks in the regular season. Not even Tennessee? No, because they have been disappointing in the past in the postseason. Rebound pulled down by Damarian Watson, and the Cyclones the other way, leading by four. Houston the one seed, Iowa State the two seed. They split a couple of regular season matchups. Both teams winning on their home courts. Foul called there. Kelvin Sampson standing right next to Kip Kissinger. I think Kelvin Sampson, by the way, just reacted and then said to him, you're right, good call. Yeah, I'm not surprised, man. I, the defender was 
pretty much up in that cylinder, and, it, and Kip Kissinger had to call it. This is a Final Four caliber officiating crew. Doug Sermons, Keith Kimball, Kip Kissinger, between them, 16 Final Fours officiated. You very easily could see Doug and company on the Monday championship game in Phoenix. There's no question about it. That's why they're doing the championship game of the Big 12. Good look, Gilbert cutting off the feed from Curtis Jones. Beautiful. That's how you handle pressure. Back screen, that pressure, and right to the basket. Iowa State leading by six. Lipsy knocked it away. Gilbert dives for it. Loose ball. Gilbert gets it. Over to Jones. And now back to Gilbert. Very physical here in Kansas City. Jones not able to hit. Wilson collects. He's one on two. Goes at the basket and draws the foul. Malik Wilson will shoot two. 3.53 to go. It's our under four timeout. And the two seed Iowa State leading by six. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let's build a retirement better. Everything we hoped it might be. Yeah, no doubt. And Malik Wilson missing the first free throw. Houston, if they're going to win this Big 12 championship, they're effectively going to have to win a road game. We mentioned 18,500 as Juwan Roberts looks on that shin contusion. But he has been healthy enough to go. You see him grabbing that shin right there. Suffered that injury in the Baylor game. It limited him to seven minutes. But, yeah, 18,500 or so fans. And most of them on this side of the street rooting for Iowa State. And then there's the group over at KC Live. Well, getting back to Jawan Roberts, many coaches would not play him in this game and save him for next week, but that's not how this team is built. Certainly Jawan, as Chris said, wants to play. Done, off the yeah. one shot and hits. Yeah, I think both these teams are built on a culture of defense, but before that, a culture of toughness, yeah, right? No question about it. If you're going to play at these two schools, you know you're going to get coached hard, you're going to defend. Chilovich with a smaller Wilson on him. Taman Lipsy puts it on the floor. Layup wouldn't fall. And now Shed and Houston within three. Shed hesitates, gets into the paint, and it blocked. Cedric Lott can't make the layup. And now push up ahead, Taman Lipsy. Romchilovic, the trailer. Lipsy got into the paint and in transition pitches it back. And Momchilovic, I think the slump might be over. Yeah, but that's the confidence that his teammates have in him because they know they need that scoring. The hero of the first game against Houston in the win on January 9th. Cryer, catch and shoot. And Lott not able to pull down the rebound. The foul will be on Iowa State, and it'll be on Momchilovic. Watch Lipsy. He, when he comes up the floor, he's surveying, and he waited for Milan to get his feet set and just dropped it right on the money. I mean, it is jam-packed just across the street. Milan Momchilovic knocking down a couple of threes in this one. Cyclones lead it by six. Under two to go as Dunn goes to work on Gilbert. Dunn hangs and can't hit. And he wanted a foul. Trent King pulled down the rebound. Yeah, and I thought it was a foul. I thought the defender got in his space. Crossover Jones. Out of bounds and off the leg of Curtis Jones. It'll be Houston basketball. The turnover on Iowa State, their fifth. That's one of those plays, John. I said, you've got to be more physical than the defense. Jones went in there 
and he babied that ball up. You're going to be a lot tougher when you take it into traffic against this defense. Well, these defenses are both very physical. Shed, acrobatic shot, and an air ball. He wanted a foul call. I mean, there's an element of it where both these defenses are going to foul you on every play. We talked with Texas Tech coach Grant McCaslin. He said the secret is you just have to act like you're not going to get fouled and keep playing. No question. No, that's where that toughness comes in on offense. Lipsy, step back, three. Taman Lipsy. Somewhere, Monty Morris and Ty Halliburton are loving this. Biggest lead of the game. Cyclones fans on their feet. Shed kick out to Cryer. And that'll go. LJ Cryer helping to keep Houston in this one. He's got seven. That's important for Houston. He had two poor performances in the two regular season games. Iowa State holding for the last shot. The one seed against the two seed. Big 12 championship is on the line. Lipsy, clock winding down, picks up the dribble. Gilbert sees the clock. Got to do something. Fires. And that will not go. And the Cyclones will take a seven-point advantage into the break. Houston held to just 23 points, a 28% shooting. Let's send it over to Chris Budden. Coach, how would you describe the physicality that you guys are playing with on the defensive end? Yeah, please, with our effort defensively, especially on the first shot, we have to do a much better job blocking out. A lot of their offense is coming off second chance, and we got to do a great job blocking out and going after rebounds with two hands. 20 minutes until a championship. What will you need in the second half? Yes, same energy, same defensive mindset, play for each other on offense, same things we've been doing. Thanks, Chris. Houston has been held to 25 or under twice this year, both times. It was Iowa State, 30-23 at the break. Halftime report, Kevin Connor, Sean Farnham. As you're watching the Big 12, on ESPN 30 23 and Iowa State with the lead welcome courtside John Chompy and Fran for Chris Budden will join us coming up all right so Fran you look at the job Iowa State did defensively certainly that was impressive but on offense they moved the ball exceptionally well let's take a look at our expert moves presented by principal well ball movement absolutely a key to that seven point lead in the first half in fact, Houston only has two points off turnovers, and that's because Cyclones taking care of it, feeding each other, keeping everybody involved. Monchovic with a big first half, the freshman. And watch this little back cut lob at the rim. It's been a good executed first half by the Clones. Let's check in with Chris Button. The lack of ball movement for Houston is what's been frustrating Kelvin Sampson in that first half on offense. He said, we're doing way too much on the first side. We're not getting it passing around or finding anything on the second side. So yeah, Iowa State's got a great defense, but we're not doing anything to help. Jawan Roberts will start the second half on the bench. That makes you wonder a little bit about his availability as this game goes on. The shin contusion that he suffered limited him to seven minutes in their semifinal win against Texas Tech. Momchilovic step back, got it to go. Milan Momchilovic with eight. Well, without Roberts, it's a small Cougar lineup, four guards and Francis. At that time, Momchilovic went right at Wilson with that height advantage. They're going to get Emmanuel Sharp going. Both games against Iowa State this year, he was big, and he's coming off a 17-point performance in the semis against Texas Tech. Cryer lost it briefly. Now it's tied up. It'll stay with Houston with two on the shot clock. Both of these teams, John, turn you over to about 20 points a game on their offensive advantage. Houston hasn't been able to do that tonight. Consequently, they're not scoring easy in the half court either. Iowa State has won the battle of points off turnovers against their opponent every game but two. One was against Houston 
at Houston, the other, their final game of the year that they lost against Kansas State. Lipsy the steal. Two on one. Gilbert reverses and in. And it's an 11 point advantage. Keyshawn Gilbert has that many. Biggest lead of the game for the Cyclones. Well, they put up their play at, at the bench, and I don't think the rest of the Cougars saw the play call. Little indecision right here. Shed going to work on Trey King from way downtown. That wouldn't fall. Rebound to Keyshawn Gilbert. Cyclones into the front court, up 11. Gilbert, got it. He's got 14, and it's a timeout for Houston. Cyclone fans making noise. They lead it by 14. Second half for the Cyclones. They are dialed in on the defensive end and sharing the ball on offense. Of course, the facilitator, Damon Lipsy, getting it done. And Gilbert's been just as brilliant as he was last night. And then add Gilbert's ability to beat you off the dribble or pull up and shoot the deep three. John, it's not in here where they're celebrating, which they are. It's everywhere in downtown. Power and Light District over there, KC Live, and Cyclone fans packed in here. Just over 18,500 at T-Mobile Center. And it's well across the street. And they get a foul on uh, Logan Gilbert, his second. Well, you you got to keep in mind, this is a shell of the Cougar team we saw two or three weeks ago. Tugler out, the freshman, now Jawan Roberts banged up, and right now it's a small team. So again, the last foul on Keyshawn Gilbert, his second. Lipsy kicks it back out. Momchilovic got it wide open. He's got 11. Keyshawn Gilbert leads all scores with 14, but Iowa State putting a thumping on Houston here early on in the second half. The lead 17, sharp. That would fall. Out of bounds, it'll be Houston basketball. Yeah, let's go back, John. We keep talking about Lipsy's defense. Watch the deflection, the steal, and then he just has a sense of who should get the ball. And right now, I'd say that is a good decision getting the freshman involved the way he has tonight. Milan Momchilovic with 11, including three threes. In and out, but Jones with the rebound. Big Rob Energy with that board. Feed inside, and that foul will be on Jamal Shedd. All right, SEC tournament, and in semifinal number two, Florida getting past Texas A&M 95-90. That sets up a matchup with Auburn as they defeated Mississippi State. Championship game, one Eastern. Uh, the ESPN. Yep, I saw both of those teams in November, and they have both had outstanding seasons in the SEC. There's that mismatch because of the four guards. Keyshawn Gilbert trying to feed a cutting Jones. Instead, they turned it over. Cryer. Shed will try and hit. Jamal Shedd with 10. Wow. Wow. That was, that was contact. Sharp rips it away. Wilson comes up with it. No calls twice. And the Cyclone fans don't like it. Our friend Brent Musburger would have said, interesting. <laughs> In other words, yeah. Something was, that was a foul. 
That one knocked away. Cyclones back the other way. Kelvin Sampson yelling at Keith Kimball that that was a foul. Well, I would say if it's not a foul on one end, it definitely wasn't on the other, so play on. Damon Lipsy handling here. Jones gets inside. He's got deep position and now kicks it out to Keyshawn Gilbert. Got to shoot something. Shot clock violation. It'll be Houston ball when we return. The Cougars the one seed and they're down 14. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let's build a retirement benefits plan that works for your team. Houston wins at 73-65. It was so much respect we had for them that night when we played at Houston. It's one possession this way or that way. And our guys gained a lot of confidence. Wow, Trey King. Jones knocks down a triple. We proved to ourselves that we can compete with them and anybody, especially when we're at our best. Both of the games that they played this year started with offensive runs by the home team, and DJ Altsberger knew that that's what they were going to have today inside this building. On the flip side, Kelvin Sampson said that first meeting in Ames, they walked in there. He goes, my team thought, oh, we're good. We can hang in the Big 12. They went into Hilton Coliseum, and it was an awakening of what it's like to play on the road and essentially doing that today. Yeah, it was 14-0 to begin in Ames. And the same thing happened, as you mentioned, 17-4 for Houston against Iowa State. But in that game, Fran, T.J. Otzelberger alluded to it. They hung around. It looked like they were going to get boat raced in that one, and they didn't. They, they made it a game, and I think that a, a game like that, even though it's a loss, contributes to their confidence. Yeah, but I think when you fight to get to the top of the league, those teams like Kansas, this year, Houston, they make you better. In this case, you've got to bring your toughness against this team. And Iowa State's done it for three games, John. Shed off the glass. That one fall. Rebound, Curtis Jones. And one of the things Houston is not doing tonight is turning the Cyclones over. And they're not getting any easy baskets because of it. Hassan Ward gets it back out to Curtis Jones. Jones inside, feeds Ward, off the glass and in, plus Tex. Oh, what I love about this, we talked about toughness. And when Jones drives it, watch how many people try to swipe at this ball. This is Cougar defense, but Jones is strong enough to get into traffic. And then a good finish by Hassan Ward. Watch the hands come in there, and Jones knows he's got to be tough enough to make that play. It's exactly what TJ's told us the last 24 hours. Javier Francis will sit now, 14-31 to go. He's got four fouls. It appears Jawan Roberts is not going to come back into this game. He started the second half on the bench and has not played the shin contusion that he suffered in the semifinals. And they're thin to begin with up front with JoJo Tugler out for the year following foot surgery. Cryer fires. And Momchilovic the rebound. It's all Cyclones. They lead it by 17. Well, this is an important battle for Houston, but this is not the war. The war begins next week in the NCAA tournament. And I know Kelvin wants to win this tournament, but I also think the discretion that discretion is a better part of Bauer in keeping a guy like uh, Jawan Roberts uh, in a position to get healthy. Jamal Shedd looking on, Jawan Roberts looking on. So two of Houston stars on the bench at the moment. Jones in and out. Malik Wilson rebounds. Yeah, they turn it over. Yeah, but, and then Kelvin's telling LJ, shoot the basketball. That's what you do best. Yeah, LJ Cryer, probably the guy on both these teams best suited to come up with a, 
Offensive barrage. Score the goal. Hassan Ward will get the credit, and he's got 10. All right. In the American Conference semifinal number one, UAB got past South Florida, and right now on ESPN2, it's Temple at FAU. So the championship comes your way tomorrow, 3.15 Eastern on ESPN. Big 12 championship. Houston likely will stay a one seed whether they win or not. Iowa State probably a two seed. If Houston can pull off a miracle comeback, they would probably be the one overall seed in the tournament. But right now, biggest lead of the game. Cyclones by 19, under 13 to play. Yep, and without Shed right now, they don't have a point guard to facilitate easier offense and tough shots. Momchilovic. You know what that looks like? Larry Bird. The biggest deficit of the year prior was at Kansas. Their last loss, February 3rd, they got down as many as 20. But right here, down 22. And it is all Iowa State. And they get the foul on Momchilovic. Who is officially out of his shooting slump. Big night last night and tonight. We're seeing glimpses of what he's going to be like the next three seasons. He's got a chance. You know, it's hard, you know, George Niang love mentioning him because he's one of the most popular athletes to ever grace that campus. This kid's in that same type of potential down the road. George Niang has had a really nice NBA career, but a magnificent college player. Momchilovich, the Wisconsin State Player of the Year, led Milwaukee to three straight state titles and basically a top 50 recruit in the ESPN 100, number 51. He's got 14 in this one. I asked him about mom and dad. I said, are they going to be here tonight? And they said, no. My younger brother has a Wisconsin State Championship game. I believe his younger brother is a junior and a very good prospect as well. So somewhere they've got a TV on in Madison. Got a good head of hair, too. <laughs> well, they've done a good job. Iowa State has over the years recruiting Wisconsin with the likes of Tyrese Halliburton, Lipsy, ball fake. This is a dynamic three-guard offense with Gilbert and Jones to shadow Lipsy, take some heat off of him. Shot clock winding down. Keyshawn Gilbert. Keyshawn Gilbert inside. That wouldn't fall. And Dunn has it. Now Malik Wilson, Houston into the front court, down by 20. Cyclones have played excellent defense. Houston has shot 25% in the game, and the Cyclone fans just will not stop making noise. Emmanuel Sharp, Lipsy the rebound. And that small lineup is getting no second shots, obviously, with the four guards. And some of the staples of what makes Houston so good, the turnovers forced, offensive rebounds not there right now. Lipsy fouled is. His shot was blocked, and he will shoot two when we come back. Cyclones getting help from all over the place. Oh, yeah. Watch this guy. Come on now. He's loving it. His teammates love it. Not bad for a freshman. Uh, joining the group. Well, these teams definitely beat each other up this season, but recent history says it's not affecting them in the NCAA tournament since 19... Since 2019, five different teams have gotten to the Elite Eight and, of course, two national championships, cha champions, Baylor and Kansas. So intrigued about Kansas. If they get healthy, reasonably healthy, John, they're still capable of making a deep run. They were the preseason number one team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks. Here's Damian Dunn now. It is all Iowa State. Houston has scored five points in the second half. Jones knocks it out of bounds, five on the shot clock. 
And again, we talk so much about Houston's defense, the number one team in the country, the top defensive team. Shed fires it up, and that one won't fall. But those who may not be that familiar with Iowa State, they are probably the next best defensive team. And, you know, this year they were pretty clearly one and two, the best teams in this league. Yep, no question. And they are number one and two in defensive efficiency, to your point, John. Here's another interesting thing. Both teams score about 20 points a game off turnovers, and tonight Houston is way below that number. Yeah, we get a chance to chat with T.J. Altenberger before their semifinal against Baylor, and one of the things that he touched on was winning the battle of points off turnovers. And you look at their D1 rank in terms of points per game, turnovers forced, and turnover margin. He's got a tough, tough group. Dunn will fire. And no good for the Temple transfer. Under 10 to go. Iowa State bidding to pick up their fifth Big 12 Tournament Championship in the last 10 years. You know, you got me thinking that Iowa State defense. Jones not able to hit, but he gets fouled. In TJ's first year, John, it was number two in the, it was number five in the country. The next year, it slipped all the way down to number eight. Right. And this year, it's back to number two, only, only behind the Houston Cougars. What a job TJ Otzelberger has done. That first year seemed like a little bit of an aberration, but now I think this program is, you know, when you think of Iowa State now, you think of grit and toughness the way you think of Houston. And the guy at the foul line epitomizes that grit and toughness as much as anybody. Rob Jones, the transfer from Denver, third year in Ames, and what a, what a story. He may not make his free throws, but his heart and soul has been poured out into this team. Dunn pulls down the rebound. Well, you alluded to he had kind of a come to TJ moment, right? His, his sophomore year, his first first year as a cyclone, TJ said, look, if you don't come back and do what we ask, just stay home over Christmas break. Came back and he was a new man. Shed can't hit. Momchilovich has it. And it is all Iowa State here in Kansas City. And I mentioned George Neag. Jones is not in that pantheon. But he's going to be long remembered for his effort and his toughness and what he's poured into this team. Momchilovich. George Neang, I think, would be in my top three favorite players to watch during my time watching this league. Uh, no the block no, no, no. right there. He can do a little bit of everything. Pass, rebound, score. He had kind of that old man game. You know, he's only a role player in the NBA, but you know we call role players in the NBA? Millionaires. Multi-millionaires. <laughs> right. George is going to have a long career, and boy, did he work hard at it. Feet of the baseline, and a throw down for Watson. And that kind of says it all from a Houston perspective. 24 points, the advantage. Shed fires. That wouldn't fall. He's had a tough day. Three for 17 for the first team All-America. Yeah, but part, partly because he's trying to get, yeah, absolutely. get, get them some points, no doubt. Oh, he's trying to he's trying to save his team. Yep, no question. Up to the goal. Lipsy off of Gilbert. The Houston Cougars have been hit by a cyclone. 54-28. When he got his first offer to play at Iowa State University, but that was under Steve Prohm. So after a coaching change and a knee injury during high school, TJ Altsberger then gets the job. The first thing he does is call up Taman Lipsky, offer him to be on this squad, and it has been a dream come true for him ever since. If you're not a Swifty, you got to be a Taman Lipsy fan. Believe it. He is some kind of player. Great hands there as Jones gets in the way of the passing lane. Gilbert is fouled. These two guys, John, I think the turning point of this season came at TCU in January. Taman Lipsy was out for that game. 
as he is right now. And Jones and Gilbert stepped up. They had 20 points each. It proved they could win without their leader. And they've been terrific ever since. And obviously, it, Lipsy makes them even better than they already are. Randy, this guy at the line is a stud. I mean, there were times I felt like last night, you're going up against the Baylor team. I thought he's the best player in the court. Yeah, I agree. And I, a lot of this happened after January 1st and certainly after that TCU game. Jones played at Buffalo. Gilbert played at UNLV. And I think even early in the Big 12 season, they were still doubting themselves until that game. Originally recruited by T.J. Otzelberger at UNLV. A St. Louis kid, Keyshawn Gilbert with 15. But it's all Cyclones in Kansas City. And a foul on Iowa State. You know, I, I'm concerned about Houston going into the NCAA tournament, John. Obviously, the key is going to be Juwan Roberts. This team three weeks ago, obviously, we don't have to, this is just obvious, they were as good as anybody in the country. And they still can be, but Roberts' injury, Tugler's injury, they lost Arsenal in December. It may be too much. Good follow there as Javier Francis comes flying in. I think the good news is Sunday night, everything will be washed away from this game, and they'll be able to focus on the next three weeks. Feed inside, good post position for Trey King, and a foul on Houston. Folks, a reminder, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. It's a must-have for Big 12 fans. With baseball and softball in full swing, there's more than 450 matchups available, along with most of the games from both conference championships. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up now. ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. And uh, Kirk Sorrow is from TCU. They probably have a chance to get back to the World Series, I would say, John. Yep. Elite-level team feed inside. And that one... They got to travel underneath. Delvin Sampson urging his team on. They're down 26. Their biggest deficit of the year prior to tonight was at Kansas. The last game they lost February 3rd where they got down as many as 20. Foul on Emmanuel Sharp, and Sharp, you talk about quiet, four fouls, and Sharp 0 for 7 has not scored. And you said it earlier, he, he averages 20 points a game in the previous two meetings. Just absolutely outstanding against this team. And he's one of the guys, I mean, look, today, their issue has been multiple things but I would say at the offensive end of the court they have not been able to solve Iowa State's defense are shooting 22 percent he's someone that has to help pick up the scoring slide there's no question about it Sharp looking to turn the corner feed inside gets it to Francis who stuffs it home well this Cougar team will keep competing Got a chance to watch this team practice about 10, 11 times this year. And I didn't learn basketball, but I learned how to coach basketball watching Kelvin work with these young kids. He was a gift for teaching the game. Trey King, the offensive rebound, and they'll set it back up. Lipsy, great look, and he finds Hassan Ward and one. The exclamation point right there. The lead is ballooned to 27. Well, this is a little bit of the changing of the guard in the big play. Jamal Shedd, absolutely brilliant this year. And the sophomore, Taman Lipsy, said, good luck to you in the NBA, and I'll take over from here because he's been sensational tonight.
Three games in this tournament. Hassan Ward, 11 for 13 from the floor, 27 total points, including a dozen in this one. Javier Francis fouling out. So Francis is done. No Jawan Roberts in the second half. And a great hand for Hassan Ward, who's given them quite a lift off the bench with 13 here today. I'm thinking about playing this team in the NCAA tournament, John. The defense is so good, but they can score the ball. So it'll be Iowa State basketball. Yeah, I mean, look, it... To some extent, whatever you thought about Houston, this Iowa State team is quite similar. And however far you thought Houston could get, I think a lot of the same logic applies to Iowa State. Yes, they're built the same way. Minus the injuries, they both hang their hat on defense. They have great point guards. And they've got wing scorers, especially the way Jones and uh, Gilbert have played in this tournament. But we saw that all season in the league. They can score. Jones finds Mochilovic. Great two-man game. Mochilovic with 16. And the freshman has made quite an impact here today. The lead is 30. We'll take a 30-second timeout. The Cyclones getting it done. That was right at tip. What do I tell you every year when these guys go deep in the tournament? Last one out of Ames, turn out the lights. We'll be back Sunday morning. We may not be able to wake up Sunday morning. We may be back Sunday afternoon. Iowa State, the Cyclones, they were picked seventh in the Big 12 this year. And they're four minutes and 48 seconds away from their fifth Big 12 tournament championship in the last 10 years. Oh, I'm watching the Houston bench, and I've, I've known Kelvin Sampson for 30 years. He's headed to the Hall of Fame, and this is not what they wanted tonight. We know why. A lot of things give Iowa State a lot of credit, but they'll cleanse this game quickly, and they'll get back to Houston, and they'll start preparing for the NCAA tournament as a number one seed. No doubt in my mind. Damian Dunn gets bumped on the baseline. John, the young man, Cedric Lott, we were at practice early in the year. He wasn't even in their top 10. He didn't get to practice much. He was going to basically spend another year as a red shirt. But he's getting all these minutes as a young guy, and uh, it's not the way Kelvin drew it up, but this is the, this is the situation they have. Foul on Demarion Watson, his third. Consider for a second, there's 432 to go in this game. Iowa State has held Houston to nine second half points. Pryor. And a rebound pulled down by Keyshawn Gilbert. Keyshawn Gilbert, excellent rebounder. Well, this is humbling, but they will they will bounce back. And meanwhile, this team has been brilliant tonight on the uh, on the other end of the court. You know, you think about a kid whose mom and dad work at Iowa State. He grew up idolizing Monty Morris and DeAndre Kane and Tyrese Halliburton. And Chris told the story about being offered a scholarship. And he played high school basketball about two and a half miles north of Hilton Coliseum. And tonight, he has dominated this game team in Lipsy. Round moment for him as the Cyclones have doubled up Houston 64 32 as they have dismantled the number one team in the country. Malik Wilson and done the offensive rebound of the putback. He 
Keyshawn Gilbert leading Iowa State into the front court. Momchilovic with a game high 18. Gilbert with 16. Momchilovic fired. I don't know about you, but this is anticlimactic. Watch out. What happens? TJ wants him to get it out, run some clock. They've got enough points. And that gives the chat, the crowd, a chance to celebrate a little bit early. A sea of red here in Kansas City. As Jones gets the feed, overshot it. And under three to go. The Iowa State Cyclones likely to be a two seed in the NCAA tournament. Kip Kissinger saying to go try the court up on that side. Break in the action. And they're about two minutes and 40 seconds away from hoisting the Big 12 trophy. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Earning, and how about the championship belt? This goes to the most outstanding player. The jacket I'm wearing, this is the Charlie Hustle varsity jacket. Every member of the winning team is going to come home with one of these colors. I'll try and work on getting you guys two one. Thank you very much. That right there, my favorite hit of the year from Chris Budden. Where's my swag? It, ha it had the, it had a little bit of wheel of fortune. Like if you're an <laughs> old school, you know, I'll take the rest on account, Vanna. I like the championship belt, no doubt. I mean, we thought we were going to have a heavyweight fight tonight. It didn't turn out that way. We did not. Credit Iowa State, though. Jones straight on, in and out. Well, the Cougars thumped here in the Big 12 championship as Sharp will fire and hit. And finally on the board, Emmanuel Sharp was 0 for 7 and had not scored. He averages 13 points a game coming off the 17-point performance in the semifinals. And as Fran mentioned, he scored 20 in each of the matchups against Iowa State earlier in the year. If and I, my guess would be if they're going to go far in attorney, Fran, they'll need Emmanuel Sharp to knock down shots. They'll get him. They'll get him. Tonight, the big three of Shed Sharp and and uh, Pryor, 7 for 37, John. Pabletsky. Omaha Baloo comes up, sets the screen. Got to get Kate. Alderman a shot. Can jumper rattles home. Trey King the bucket. They love Red Holly. They love him. The walk on. He was a quarterback on the Kansas football roster as a freshman, and the fans here at Hilton South, they love him. All right, still to come, 8.30 Eastern tonight. It's the number one seed, North Carolina, and the 10th seed, NC State, the ACC men's tournament, presented by T. Rowe Price. Yeah, Hawley and Kelderman in. They do so much at practice, and Hawley is a uh, bundle of energy guarding the ball right now. Little feed inside. And the foul will be on Hawley. Wildman is probably a little too much, but his energy on the bench is palpable every single game. Yeah, I, I would say that if you just look for him going forward, yeah. you'll find him. 46.9 seconds left. And hats off to the Cyclones. A magnificent job. There he is. Yes, yeah, Cyclone power with Conrad Hawley.
The story in this one, the Iowa State defense. Oh! Kay Kelderman. He drills one from deep. And the Cyclone fans loving it. It's sharp off the glass. And that'll do it, John. What a night. What a night for the Iowa State Cyclones. T.J. Otzelberger has got to be proud of his team picked to finish seventh in the league. They'll likely be a two seed in the NCAA tournament for the fifth time in the last 10 years. The Cyclones are the champs. Iowa State thrashes Houston 69-41 here in Kansas City. Iowa State, your Big 12 champions. Congratulations. A phenomenal year for Houston as well. The number one team in the country coming into this tournament. So TJ Otzelberger and the Cyclones will hoist the trophy. Milan Momchilovic had a big game as he was able to knock down four threes. 18 total in time now for our player of the game. And it's brought to you by Phillips 66. And it is Keyshawn Gilbert. 16 points, six rebounds. Let's send it over to Chris Button. We talk all the time about the defensive effort of your guys, but what did they give you tonight? Yeah, they gave me everything they had. They, they did such a great job in preparation. So much respect for Houston, for Coach Sampson, their program, which helped us bring out the best. And out of the locker room to start the second half, our focus was so good. Just really proud of our guys. This is a program and a fan base that's used to watching you guys cut down nets here, but this is the first under you. What does this mean for this team right now? Yeah, it means a lot. These guys have really worked hard every day, fortunate for this amazing fan base and environment. So I, I know we got a quick turnaround to what's coming next, but we're going to enjoy this tonight. We got a quick turn around for you to get that voice back. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. 69-41 the final. Congratulations to Iowa State, our 2024 Big 12 champion. Special thanks to our producer, Scott Gustafson, our director, Anthony DeMarco, for Chris Budden, Fran Priscilla, and our entire outstanding crew. I'm John Chomby. Thanks so much for joining us here in Kansas City. The Cyclones do it again. They win the Big 12 championship. Time to send it to Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. Gentlemen. What a performance by Iowa State.